Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're taking another look at the recently released Tom Clancy's The Division 2, and seeing how the final retail version of the game compares to its initial 2018 E3 reveal trailer. Ubisoft has become somewhat infamous for their tendency to downgrade their final retail products after showcasing visually stunning technical demos at E3 presentations. And with The Division 2, it appears Ubisoft will be continuing this trend with some noticeable level omissions. But at the same time, I did manage to find several improvements to the level of detail in a few areas, suggesting that maybe Ubisoft is trying to lose their bad reputation after all. And before we go on, I want to clarify that I'll be playing the retail version of The Division 2 on the PC platform with the graphics set as high as possible at a native 1440p resolution. And the footage of the E3 demo will appear slightly blurry because of the video compression, but the more notable changes should still be easy to discern between regardless. And to help keep my thoughts organized here, I'm going to analyze the changes on a scene-by-scene -scene basis, pointing out various changes to the environment, gameplay, and overall image quality. Alright, so starting off, the E3 demo slowly pans down towards a player agent inside what appears to be a jungle environment. This area has several dynamic leaves that can be pushed out of the way, and some decent dynamic water effects. As the player walks along the pathway, it becomes clear that this jungle is part of an exhibit, and the agent then walks through some vines into a short hallway of the Botanical Gardens building in Washington, D.C. Unfortunately, that entire jungle exhibit has been cut from the final game, and is completely inaccessible. I've looked all around the Botanical Gardens building for a secret doorway, but you can clearly see by peeking through the small doorway from the demo that the area is not a playable zone. The hallway directly after this jungle exhibit, however, appears almost identical, except for a small change to the crate hanging from the ceiling. Almost every single prop and decorative item here is the same, except for the parachute crate which has been moved slightly to the left. The lighting also appears to be very different here, despite both versions taking place early in the morning, though this could be caused by the weather conditions at the same time. Still, despite that entire jungle section prior being removed, this room almost appears like it's been improved on. It's difficult to say for sure, but it looks like the steps to the right have increased texture resolution. Like I said before, this is likely caused by the compression from the E3 footage, and after checking an uncompressed version of the footage thanks to some suggestions in my past videos, I was able to acquire even closer comparisons to double check this. And sure enough, the bricks in the stairs and the garden closure sign appear slightly more crisp in the final game. Other changes include a few new pots lying around, but other than that, the scene looks practically identical. The player then walks into a room with a large, dried-up Christmas tree and presses a button to start up an old Christmas light event. As the lights slowly turn on, a deer is spooked in a nearby hallway and runs away, and the player slowly walks around admiring the old abandoned room. This room appears almost the same in the final game, but again, Ubisoft has removed a few things. First, the button is no longer available to press. The tree will turn on automatically during night hours, but the music and moving light effects in this room have been removed. The deer is also nowhere to be seen inside the building, though there are plenty of animals roaming the environment outside. As the player circles the tree, they then jog towards an open doorway into a side garden. Here, we see a few more cosmetic changes. First, the ripped edges of a banner have been removed from the doorway, and the door itself has been inverted, now opening outwards instead of inwards. As the player runs outside, they run into a small civilian camp with an available side mission. This suggests that this area was initially going to be a settlement location. However, the botanical gardens in the final game only serves as an SHD cache location and nothing more. After accepting a side mission, the player then runs towards a wall where two children are playing. But again, all the AI have been removed from this area, despite the colored chalk still appearing in the same place. The player then vaults over the wall into the street below. Oddly enough, you can't vault over this wall here, despite it looking like a climbable location. So instead, you're forced to backtrack to the main door to exit the building. The streets beyond the botanical gardens are where things get to be a bit more interesting. First, the lighting has changed drastically, resulting in what I think is a much more accurate sunrise than before. The original demo version had a sort of pink hue to it that seemed a bit off, but the final retail version looks slightly more natural. That being said, it's possible this change in coloration could have been directly influenced by the dynamic weather in that demo, and could even appear the same way in the final version under special circumstances. But I personally never noticed the game looking quite the same as the demo in the several hours I've put in so far. Another interesting change is the level of detail in the environment. At first glance, the abandoned streets here appear nearly identical, but after looking very closely, I noticed a few changes to the decoration. When looking towards the Capitol building, for example, you'll notice that there's now less garbage bags piled up next to the sign. 
As the camera turns though, you'll notice that the highly detailed wrecked police car appears identically in the final version. Complete with the bird feces on the passenger seat, police tape draped over the rear of the car, and the same large dent in the side door. As the player approaches the police car, they pull out their map, and there has been a very slight change to how this functions in the final game. Initially, the game would zoom outward, showing a bit more overhead of the area. But the final retail version fades the gameplay and opens into the map immediately. My guess is that this was done to prevent exploiting the option in the game's multiplayer modes. But after closing the map, I notice a nice improvement in the retail version. This scene going towards the sinkhole has much more detail than it did before, with several suitcases now laying around. It looks much better, even if there is now a glitch sign just floating around. The player then jogs over to a sinkhole and looks down at their friendly player below. As the player looks down in the sinkhole, you can clearly see the player's shadow being projected on the far side, and aside from a slight difference in the time of day, this shadow seems to cast in exactly the same way. The sinkhole itself also has a few added details, like some yellow biohazard bags and a few large traffic cones piled up in between the vehicles below. The players eventually move along the ledge and climb out of the area. Here we can see a piece of the president's plane was removed from the final version. The players then begin setting up for an attack on the downed airplane outpost. In the final retail version, this plane still serves as a hostile outpost, but the actual position of the outpost has shifted further north, making the area in the demo essentially a non-combat zone. You can always lure enemies back, but they don't appear in the same way as before. This means the sniper way up on top of the plane is no longer a part of the experience. Because of this, I can't mirror the action from the demo exactly, though I still ran the same route so that I could show off what the environment itself looks like, and I also tested most of the gameplay features that were revealed to determine whether anything had changed. And thankfully, this portion of the demo is nearly identical to the retail game. All of the player animations, all the combat abilities, and all the impressive visual effects are just as good, if not better, in the current version of the game. Reflections appear slightly sharper now, random debris has been increased slightly, and explosive effects like this one are even more impressive now. I'm also happy to see that the cool dynamic water simulation is still at play in the retail game, with seeker mines causing a cool trail of water as they roll towards enemies in the area. Also, I noticed that the types of enemies used in this area have changed as well. The large juggernaut enemy that the players are shown fighting in the demo is no longer available to fight at this plane. There's plenty of these exact same enemies elsewhere in the game, and they behave the same way, with armor pieces that need to be broken off before you can deal real damage. But the plane outpost is now much easier to complete. My guess is that the enemy types will scale based on your current level, and can also change based on the number of players in your current group. But unfortunately, I can't test this without making a new character or joining another player who hasn't made it this far. Maybe you can replay the outpost in the endgame with higher difficulty enemies, but I haven't found a way to do this yet. The point is, these enemy types are all in the game, and you'll have plenty of chances to fight them. After defeating the enemies around the plane, the player shoots up a flare to claim the area. This is also slightly different in the final game. Shooting up a flare will cause a defensive event to begin, where enemy reinforcements show up while you wait for friendly backup to arrive. After shooting the flare, the player then picks up some loot and then begins to explore the interior of the plane. But as the players are exploring, they're interrupted by hostile gunfire ripping through the windows, and they all rush out onto the elevated plane wing facing the Capitol building. This cinematic moment has been removed from the game. The Capitol building, while still a main goal, is not as massively fortified as it suggested in the demo. You can easily rush up to the front gate without anyone even knowing. If you look closely, a lot of the defensive structures have been removed as well, and considering the camera begins to change during the sequence in the presentation, this was likely just done as a cinematic piece rather than suggesting it was part of the gameplay experience. Still, as far as E3 comparisons go, The Division 2 isn't nearly as bad as some of Ubisoft's other more infamous downgrades. The biggest omissions here include the jungle exhibit in the botanical gardens, a small piece of plane debris climbing out of the sinkhole, and a slightly shifted combat encounter at the plane location. But the actual visual presentation of the game from the textures, lighting, and animations are all pretty much identical, and there's several examples of improvements that have been made to the scene complexity. But what do you guys think? Are these changes as bad as some of Ubisoft's other past blunders, or are you happy with how The Division 2 turned out? Let me know in the comments section. Also, if you'd like to see me play this and several other games live, check out the link to my Twitch channel in the description. I typically begin streaming in the late afternoons during the week and have been improving the quality of the stream this past week, and would love to hear some suggestions. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this posted every week.